Iran is making threats that as soon as the month of Ramadan ends, there will be many deadly attacks against Israel. The IDF is working hard to eradicate terrorism in Judea and Samaria. And finally, we'll take a look at the AI system that identified 37,000 targets and the reason the IDF uses it. I'm Yair Pinto, and this is your Boots on the Ground report about what is happening in Israel on the 181st day of the war with Hamas and Hezbollah. This morning, mobilization orders were issued to IDF reservists who serve in the air defense battalions. This is because of threats from Iran that there will be revenge attacks following the elimination of senior Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps officials in an airstrike in Damascus on Monday. Iran's reaction to this assassination is likely to include increased rockets attacks by Hezbollah into Israel, and this is why Israel is moving to strengthen air defense. However, there is another possibility that Iran could attack Israeli and Jewish institutions around the world. This includes embassies, but also synagogues and Jewish community centers. In the last few days, all the leaders of the Iranian resistance axis, from Hezbollah in Lebanon to the Houthis in Yemen, the Hamas leadership in Qatar, and everyone in between, made statements about carrying out attacks to avenge the assassinations of the Iranian leadership in Syria. But the truth is that the most capable terrorist operatives in all of these organizations have already been destroyed by Israel. These threats are a reflection of the fact that the terrorists are afraid that they could be next. So they're making big noises to try and reassure themselves and their supporters, and they hope it will also intimidate Israel. Obviously, we are not intimidated, but the next few days will be very tense as we wait to see what these groups will actually try to do. We will continue to update you on this topic, and we invite you to join us in sharing the truth by sharing our videos and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for all your supports. Any donation you make will go to creating more videos like this. Back to the news. This morning, the IDF spokesperson's office published updated information from the Shin Bet's interrogations of the hundreds of terrorists who surrounded the IDF during the recent operation in the Shifa hospital in Gaza City. Among those who surrendered were senior field commanders from both Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad organization. These men have often spoken of their content for the IDF and their determination to, as they say, resist the occupation and so on. But for all this tough talk, as soon as the Shin Bet started asking them questions, they immediately began to tell everything they knew about their fellow terrorists, the location of stored weapons and ammunition, and everything else that the Shin Bet wanted to know. Some of the most valuable intelligence the Shin Bet got from these interrogations came from members of the Hamas Ministry of Internal Security and the Hamas Emergency Committees and even Hamas military intelligence itself. This included the deputy head of the news department in Hamas's military intelligence, Asraf Abrahim Samur. He told the Shin Bet all about the Hamas operations of the Shifa hospital and the various branches of the organization which used it. This is what happens when a terrorist organization with no positive vision for the future based on personal connections and favors gains control of a territory. As soon as the network of personal favors is disrupted, it's every man for himself and everyone betrays his friends to save his own skin. Meanwhile, soldiers from the IDF 7th Division are fighting in the El Karara and the Abbasaida neighborhoods in the northern part of Khan Yunis. These mopping up operations include many encounters with Hamas terrorists, which always end up the same way, with some terrorists being eliminated and many others surrendered and telling the IDF about the remaining holdouts. This allows the IDF to carry out more raids, eliminate more terrorists, and then locate and confiscate large stocks of weapons and ammunition 
so that the remaining terrorists can't use them against Israel. In all of these raids, valuable intelligence documents are also seized and handed over to the Shin Bet. We are learning a lot about Hamas and their Iranian sponsors from these documents, and we'll be sharing this information with our partners while also fighting terrorism. Once again, I will ask you to help us continue to spread the truth. It's very important to take a minute, hit the follow button, so that together we can spread the truth. So please subscribe to this YouTube channel and keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Switching our focus now, I want to talk about a report in the British newspaper The Guardian. This report is about the IDF's use of artificial intelligence. This report sparked a lot of interest, so we went to take a look ourselves. The system the IDF uses is called Lavender, and according to the IDF Cyber Command Unit 8200, which developed it, it has already been used to help identify 37,000 potential targets based on their connection to Hamas. Here's how it works. The Lavender system knows how to create a database of people with characteristics which make it likely that they are members of Islamic Jihad or Hamas organizations. The sources we spoke to said that the processes have evaluated from random sampling of arrested terrorist suspects and cross-referencing them with the Lavender program predictions. This evaluation showed that the program had a 90% accuracy level. Following this, the IDF gave Unit 8200 approval for the widespread use of the program. According to The Guardian, they created a database of tens of thousands of people classified as low-level activists, mainly in the military wing of Hamas. Another AI program code named The Gospel focuses on buildings. This database is constantly fed updated information which it processes, cross-checking with other information and producing up-to-date layers of information on military operatives of terrorist organizations. Other news portals in the US have reported that the programs also use facial recognition software which is based on technology from the Israeli company CoreSight which at the beginning of the war helped hospitals in Israel identify victims of the Hamas surprise attack. According to Israeli intelligence officials, the software also uses Google Photos and can recognize faces from large crowds and from photographs taken by unmanned aerial vehicles. Thank you so much for watching another report of Boots on the Ground about what is happening in Israel. Your help is vital to Israel's success and to its victory in this war. The truth needs to be shared and spoken loudly all over the world. And most importantly, people need to know how to pray for the situation, because this is a spiritual war and we need prayers in order to win. So thank you for standing with us and keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Hello, this is Mati here in Jerusalem with TBN Israel. This is Yair Pinto from TBN Israel here in Jerusalem. TBN Israel is keeping viewers informed with Israel-focused news, culture, and what God is doing in this land. Support TBN Israel today online at tbn.org Israel. Thank you.